As most of you are aware, biologists tend to use big fancy words and this is really confusing. But I'm here to demystify the words since we do use them when we talk about blood cells. So here we have our red blood cell and we could call it a red blood cell just like astronomers say the big red spot on Jupiter. We decided we wanted to use Greek and Latin word roots because it gives a good description of what the cell looks like or even how it functions. So all of these bits and pieces of the word give us clues to the cell. So this cell of course is red because it has hemoglobin and the iron in it will oxidize and turn slightly red. So this is our erythrocyte. Most cells will end with the suffix of cyte and erythro just means red. And I'll put two here for demonstration. Now these cells look white when you look at them upon gross observation. So when we look at these cells separated from all the red blood cells, they do tend to look a little more white. And so we call these cells leukocytes. Leuco means white and cyte of course means cells. So all of our white blood cells, we can call them leukocyte. I'm going to move this cell for now. And we're going to look at the class of leukocytes that have granules and also have an interesting shaped nuclei. When we look at these cells, we can see that there are granules represented by sprinkles or icing in these. We call these cells granulocytes because they contain granules. That's a simple descriptive term that just helps us. Sometimes we can call these cells another name based on the fact that they have, instead of one big nucleus, they have a nucleus that looks sort of like it's in parts, like there's many nuclei instead of just one. So we give these the very difficult name, poly, morpho, nuclear, whoops, site, leukocytes. Many shaped nucleus white cell, polymorphonuclear leukocyte. Whew. That's even a mouthful for me. Those of us who work with these cells tend to abbreviate it to just PMN. Then we know we're talking about these granulocytes and their unique nuclei. These cells you can see, even though they have similarities, they are all different colors. So let's go ahead and talk about each one in turn. This cell is a basophil. That's an interesting term. Maybe you know the suffix or prefix of fill, meaning love or to attract. But it's called a basophil because it has a chemicals within the cell that have negative charge, sort of like electrons, has a negative charge and it attracts a particular type of stain called a, called a basophilic stain, which means that the granules then are going to stain blue. So this cell we just call a basophil based on the way it stains. And there are other cells in the body that are called basophils that are not these blood cells. So let me move that. The other type of stain we use uh, commonly for blood is called eosin. And eosin is attracted to chemicals in the cell that have a general positive charge. So we call cells with the general positive charge for most of their granules that attract the eosinophilic stain and eosinophil. This one I remember when I was first learning it, Michael Jackson was Captain EO down at Disney. So I always thought, oh, that, that's easy to remember because he wore a red jacket, Captain EO, eosinophil. So these cells stain red or orange or pink. Okay. We'll move that out of the way. Then our last cell, even though it's described as pink here, generally it has granules, but the granules have neither a positive nor a negative charge. So really they're neutral and do not pick up the stain. So we call these cells neutrophils. That was our overview of our granulocytes. So the funny thing about biology is if we have something named a granulocyte, oftentimes we're going to have something that's not a granulocyte. And to do that, we just add this fix A. So we will have A granulocyte. It's not just one granulocyte, it means it has no granulo granules within it. And that would be this cell and 
this cell. These cells do not have an overabundance of granules within their cytoplasm, so that's why they're called agranulocytes. And since they also have just one large nucleus right in the middle, we also can call them something else. And we happen to call these mononuclear leukocytes. These, both of these cells are considered mononuclear leukocytes. Maybe you've heard of the disease mononucleosis, the kissing disease. Well, that's because we see a lot of these cells in particular within the blood uh, when someone gets mononucleosis. That's one way to describe these cells. Let's go ahead and move these two here. And I'm going to move this cell out of the way just for a little bit. And we're going to focus on this cell. This cell we just call a monocyte. And this cell doesn't do that much while it's in the bloodstream. When it leaves the bloodstream, it turns into a different kind of cell that didn't quite make it during the shipping. <laughs> and this cell can eat bacteria and viruses and work on attacking anything that's invaded in the body. This cell is called, since it's big, it's called a macrophage, and it's a big eater. Phage means to eat. We have the monocyte, turns into a macrophage, and the macrophage just means big eater. So it's a big cell, but it also tends to eat a lot. So what's another cell that is, also has this capacity to eat things? We're going to go back to our neutrophil. Our neutrophil is the first cell on the line of defense for an infection, we call this cell a phagocyte. That's just a descriptive term, but if someone said, oh, a phagocyte, they're either talking about the neutrophil or that macrophage. So now we have one more cell, to, or two more to briefly discuss. This cell, remember, is a mononuclear leukocyte. It is also an agranulocyte, but more properly, because it's found in the lymph nodes, and it is able to look through the lymph fluid of the body for disease, this cell is called a lymphocyte. There are B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. It, this name describes where it can be found and what it does. Now platelets, that's sort of boring. That just means little plate. I would disappoint you greatly if I didn't have a nice fancy name for it, these. We actually do call these thrombocytes. Although site is misleading because these really aren't cells, they're pieces of cells from, that come from a very large cell within the bone marrow. Thrombo means clot, so this describes that these little pieces of cells are involved in clotting, in blood clots and forming scabs.